shoulder. This is a good shoulder here. You know, you, I use the the tips is the best, as you can see. There's the very tip of the the feather. It's a large feather. You get them obviously lots of different colour, and it's very soft and easy to work with. It's one of the easiest quills to use when marrying wing flies or doing this style of flies. I'm going to show you how this one's made up. Now you need to cut the right and the left side, you need fibres from the right and the left side. Now I'm going to start with my side first and uh, we lift the yellow up, the yellow here and then we put the orange on top. Now it's quite easy, we just lay it on the top, pull, I just pull the orange into the yellow to the right length. Once it's there, I just then touch it at the back or hold it and then run my fingers through. And you'll see that it marries together. It marries very easy. Then I've got my dubbing needle and I take out what I want. In this case, I want one strand of the yellow at the bottom. So I just take one away. And then I want two orange in the top. So I come back in, take two orange, and then I come back in with the yellow again, same yellow piece. Just again, bring it into your fingers to get the right length. Just hold it at the back and on top, and then you just draw your fingers through it. Keep doing it to the they marry together, they all come together. And then it's just a matter of then I want two yellows. Just bring it bring the needle through as you can see like that. And then remove the yellow. Just make sure that you've got it as well caught on at the back. You see a good length there, so you've got a lot of lot lot of material to work with. And then we get our orange again. Just lay that on the top, the length we want. You could, I mean, other fibres you could use is turkey, duck quill. You could, there's one or two other ones you can use, but good shoulders, good. I like it. And the next on top of that is black. There's my black, and again, we just bring this in to the length we want. Hold it at the back here and then just allow it to marry onto the feather as you can see. And then finish off with white. Get some white. And again, we bring this in this right length and then we marry it. Just at this point, just take your time and bring everything in. It's a nice light touch you need, and you'll find that they the marry together. Now there's too much white there, so you come back in with the, the needle. You want the same amount of material as the black, so they just take it away. That'll do another fly, so set it back down. And there you go. Now you've got to repeat this on the, on the other side. So this is my side. Then you do the same on the other side. And that's how you build your ring up to get that nice colour combination. It's easier if it is the same fibre, if it's exactly the same. And there we go. Let you see this side, the main side, that's it. It's not too bad. I could probably bring the yellow in for you better, let me see. See if you find, like, see there's that yellow, it's just slightly too long, so what you do is just come in. Take it away from the, the feather itself, away from the orange. Just line them back up. They will marry together. If you're not happy, you can always go back. Just take your time, slightly bring it through your fingers. Now we fly up our wings already, as a pair of wings we've got ready to. For a fly, I'll go right on my left side, just ready to get now tied in. 
The hook I'm using, this is a Camasan, it's a B175 size 10. Now you use the hook, whatever hook you have, a wet fly hook, whatever you feel suits the fly, it's up to yourself. It's just, this is what I use a lot, so. Thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread 8 in black. And simply put down a layer of thread along the shank, just all the way along. Now in this fly I'm going to come slightly around the bend, just down a wee bit, just about, normally I would stop in line with the barb. In this case I'm just going to come round because I'm going to put in a small peacock hero uh, butt. So it's just part of the dressing or the style of the fly anyway. For the tail I'm just going to use, this is a golden pheasant crest. And you can see I've really made it, I've dyed it sunburst. It's really, really bright and uh, lightens the fly up. Uh, it's up to yourself, you could use natural if you wish. Which is not far away from it. So Tail length. You're looking round about the length of the body, just a couple of turns or so just to get into position. Just hold the tail you want, your fingers, and just move it to get it to suit or sit where you want. So you need to come back in and try that again, it's just not sitting right. Sometimes a wee bit of moisture on it controls the fibres until you get them tied in. And at the same time it gives you an idea of the length, so there we go, that'll do it there. A couple of turns. Let's check, it looks okay. Trim it the full length of the body. Second part of the tail is a dyed hot orange golden pheasant tippet. Now all I do is hold the tips of the fibres and trim away what I need and then remove the, the main feather. Length, well it's up to your really cell, I mean I would say around about halfway, halfway into the crest so a couple of turns again on the top get it to sit. We quite look, that's fine. Now I've not been fussy with this fly, so I'm just going to tie it as it comes. You could spend a bit more time getting it to sit a wee bit better, but that's fine. Now I'm using some dyed black peacock hero. This is just strong peacock hero dyed black. Uh, this one's from Vineyard, so there's plenty of companies that actually produce this. You're looking for a fine fibre, so you so take about an inch or so off that. Sometimes the tip, I'm tying it in by the tip area, so sometimes the tip can be a wee bit fragile, a wee bit, well it breaks easy, so you just got to be careful. Now to protect that, what I do is I get some super glue, just put a small reservoir on it one side and then wind through it, and what this does, it gives you plenty of grip. Now don't worry about too much about the way it's sitting. That'll do fine, just to give the impression of a butt. Couple of turns to hold. Trim away the excess. Now I'm going to come in and tie in the rib. Full length of the body again, just keep everything nice and even. Just a turn to hold. Now for the body hackle, this is a, I'll show you, there you go. It's a hen, a grade 2 hen saddle cream and this is this one's by Metz. Oop, there you go. And uh but what I've done is I've dyed it sunburst as you can see. I take one of the smaller feathers and then what I like to do is remove the fluff a wee bit, just the first half inch or so. Don't remove it all because this gives you a good grip when you're winding it on. And then the side this is the front of the hackle facing myself. The side it meets the body, uh, I'm going to remove the fibres and all I do is tear it away. It's quite easy to do. And then the point when you tie it in is there. And we can trim this full length of the body. Just gives it plenty of grip. And have it on top of the rib. Or catch it in the top of the rib. For the body, it's just black floss, a rayon floss. Again, full length of the body. And then just take your time winding down, keeping these materials sitting. You don't want them twisting round as you wind. You want them to sit. If they twist round, you get a twisted body. I'm coming, I'm winding at a slight angle. This helps to keep them straight. And then as I get near the front, or near the ends, I just straighten up. 
just a wee bit of wax here, just to give me grip. You see the difference here, a wee bit of wax gives you that extra grip. That'll do it. And then we wind the floss up, just run it through your fingers, just to open the, uh, flatten the fibres. And then we build our, or make our body with the floss. And then shape into it. All the way up. Now I've got a couple of millimetres to work with up there, up at the eye, so that I can tie in the front hackle and tie everything off. So we wind it up, around about five times or so is average. If you're using the right length or the right size of tinsel, five tons should be around about enough. But there's nothing wrong with six, it's up to you. It's just tradition, that's just a way of saying that like, if you get five tons of rib with, a, with the right size of tinsel, it should fit. And that keeps everything in proportion. If it's too heavy, you're only going to get four tons. If it's too light, you're going to have to have seven tons. So if it's the right size, then that should fit. And as I say now, all we have to do is follow the rib. Just you're behind the rib all the way up. Just check this point then. Right on the edge. Hopefully I get enough hackle here. Just made it. Cross your thread. And then tidy up. Trim away the excess. A wee quick look to see how things are sitting. You see it makes a lovely nice hackle following your rib. It's a right dressy way of tying a fly so that's what it's for. Then you want to get yourself a dyed black, in this case this is a Chinese hen, Chinese hen fiber, a uh, feather. Just going to tie it in by the tip, length to looking round about, I mean you want much the same length as the fibers in the body, especially the ones near the top. So you get a nice balance then, come in with the tip, just fold it back. So a wee bit of wax on my thread here to make sure it's not going to move. Get the thread tight and break away the tip. Or you can cut it away, it's up to yourself. And then, depending on the quality of the feather you're using, anything from, sort of, I would say three tons anyway for this fly. Especially with these, these hackles. So all the way around, three to four depending on the quality. If it's like the, the genetics, you're probably only going to need a couple of tons. And there we are, across your thread, open, just by a 90 degree bend into the stem. What that does, it opens out the, the hackle, so you get the tons of thread in. If you look there, the fibres have opened out, and then I can get the thread tons in. It means then you're not tying in, or bulk, bulking up the head with the, the hackle. So maybe that. One or two is still left, but just fold them back. A wee bit of wax on your thread. And there we are. And that's your, your body ready to go. Just for ready for your wing. Let me quick look, see how they're been sitting. Looks okay. We've got a ring we're ready on our desk. Bring them both together. Now I'm not going to be too fussy with the wing. It's lined, so you're looking at the underside, and I've just lined up the points or the tip of the feathers. Now I'm going to fold them down either side. Length, the tips could go towards the end of the tail, or just or shorter, it's up to yourself. Uh, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is just fold them down either side. Just sit them on top, now I'm going to check that they both, make sure they're the same length. Bring your fingers right forward towards the eye. And then do a pinch and loop, just take the thread into your fingers. And then what I'm going to do is come straight up and allow the, 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 the loop to come through my fingers, slip. Do the same again. Come in with two or three turns, making sure they're not going to move. And if they feel they've moved a bit, you can always lift these fibres at the end, just lift them up. And there we are. That looks, that looks okay. And then it's just a matter of then 
make sure the wing's not going to move while we cut away these fibres. I usually like to hold the wing and then trim. Try and use a nice sharp pair of scissors. Clean the eye. Then what I do is bring the thread to the front and then work the thread from the eye into the cut ends and work the way up. This ties in the wing much better and gives you a nice tapered tapered head. As I say, I don't want to be too fussy with the wing. You can spend a lot of time to lift these fibers up. Make sure the head's clean. It looks not too bad. And then we're going to put a finish. Come in. On the way down, just you can tidy up again. And there we are. Now, for speed, I'm just going to use a, a UV resin, a light UV resin, just to give you the, the idea of how the head should look. Just a nice light coat, don't put it on too heavy. Just going to work my way around. Now, I would normally just varnish the hair two or three times. You can do that, you can put a fine coat of this on and then a couple of coats of varnish. And you'll find that the head's perfect. But just put this on nice and thin. It's very easy to overdo it. And then come in with your torch and set the resin. Things not too bad of. That's better your side than it is my side. But at least give you an idea of the tying method and the style. So anyway, let's get my varnish. Now a really thin coat of varnish. All the way around which will seal it. And basically finish the fly off. There we are. And that's my variant of the famous trout fin. <laughs>